Maybe let's not have my dead pansies like front center. Hey guys, welcome back to Keeping Afloat with the Joneses. You saw the title, you already know what this is about, so let's just jump in. So as a disclaimer, I feel like we should say these are all just our personal costs. This isn't necessarily representative of what everybody else would pay depending on their extravagance of living. We live pretty simply. We like to live within our means, so this works out for us, but just keep that in mind. Okay, so we're going to start out talking about our monthly expenses, full transparency, and then we will move on to initial costs, initial investment. So rent, we don't actually technically have rent per se, which is one of the draws of living out here. We were pretty sick of paying thousand, twelve hundred bucks a month in rent, which depending on where you're viewing from, that might be cheap to you, but that's expensive to us. So our mooring fees, twenty five hundred a year, access to the marina here. You get a dinghy dock to park your boat, whatever your boat is you need to get to shore. I think it works out to be about 208 bucks per month. Of course, we pay that in a lump sum, but for the sake of this video, let's just pretend that's monthly. $208 a month in theory for rent. Not bad. It's not bad. Uh, utilities. Gas. Propane gas we use for cooking, heating the house, and cooling the refrigerator. We fill up our gas bottle once a month. How big is it? It's a 100 pound bottle. It doesn't matter if it's summer or winter. If we're using heat, the refrigerator runs less, and if we're in the summer, the refrigerator's running more. So no matter what, we use $70 a month in gas. Headache's Boom. taking it to town and back. Yeah, the logistics of that are a little bit difficult. Electricity. We have solar, so we don't really have an electricity cost. We had one initial cost. Yeah, that kind of factors into our initial investment, which we'll get to in a moment. All right, so we want to talk about solar and powering the house. This is our setup here. It's a very basic setup. The only thing that our solar does not run is our washer dryer, and we probably do laundry like once a week, and we run the generator for that. So over the course of a month, maybe what, like 15, 20 bucks? and fuel for the generator. So let's call our electricity costs 15, 20 bucks. Pump out. So septic. septic system has to be pumped out weekly. We pump all our boats out weekly, but we have a grant for that. So the North Carolina Wildlife Association helps us funding our pump out. So we did a whole video about this in case you're more curious about how all that works. We pay $5 a week to pump out. Yeah, so five bucks a week, roughly 20 bucks a month, assuming there's about four weeks every month. 20 bucks a month covers our septic. Of course, it's always nice to tip the person who is pumping your boat out, but luckily, Brandon <laughs> tends to pump our boat out, so. And Sarah has never tipped me. <laughs> Yeah, so for logistics, getting to and from here, boating in and out, that's maybe 50 bucks a week between the two boats. One boat, the old boat that Sarah drives, it uses a ton of fuel because it's a two-stroke. And the four-stroke we drive, maybe $5 a week. And it may be $40 a week for the two-stroke. So it changes, it just depends. Hopefully in the summertime I can use my paddleboard more and not use any fuel using that. <laughs> we've talked about all the money we've spent a month, which is less than $300 to live out here. We well, gotta give them like a grand total. I'm sure Sarah will make a pop up for that. <laughs> yes, but. the grand total is $373 a month on average to uh, Roughly have all of our utilities. Roughly $373, just around $373. Not 374, 374. Look, I'm just trying to be helpful. Give y'all. But the value exact... of life gained is worth probably 3000 a month for the way that oh, we yeah. get to live. So we pay less, we live more. Yeah, so in total, 373 a month is not too shabby. I mean, I know both of us were paying over $1,000 in rent and utility each before we moved out here. So that's a huge amount of savings. That's a lot of extra money in your pocket every month. I'm not saying every situation of living on a houseboat, you would save money. If you're tied up to a marina, it's probably gonna be a lot more expensive, um, especially depending on where you are. 
and what's included in that because you're paying for your power on a meter you're paying for your water on a meter you're paying usually per what square foot for your boat so if you're in a bigger boat that the could link, be pretty expensive not square feet. the link so it could potentially be expensive but the way we're doing it we're saving a lot of money you would be really surprised. I know the first time that I came through this harbor, I was looking at all of these houseboats and floating cabins and I was like, oh my gosh, that is the lap of luxury. How do I get that? How much money do I have to make to be able to afford something like that? And I'm just amazed at how, how affordable and accessible it actually is on a month to month basis. But you were probably asking yourself, but what about the initial cost? How much did this place actually cost to begin with, what about that? We paid less than 30000 to buy the place in a horrible shape, which for these cabins, they're really tough to get. So they're grandfathered in. You can't have any more on this lake. So to buy one, it costs a little bit of money. And then the renovations, we had another 25, 30 more in it, but we did all the work ourselves. So that saves some money. So the initial cost is roughly plus 50. Which also when you think about it, it's really not that bad. I mean, $50,000 would buy what? Like a decent double wide? You couldn't even buy like an old house, like a one bedroom house for that on land. It had holes in the floor and the roof you could. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, in comparison to like a traditional style of living, a $50,000 initial investment and then a few hundred dollars a month for everything is amazingly affordable i think and we don't have any lawn maintenance fees the garage door never hangs up but yeah we thought that it might be surprising for some of y'all just to know it's really somewhat of an accessible way of living and it's it's really not reserved just for like doctors and lawyers and stuff that's not what we are so um, but it's not all my ties and umbrella drinks no i mean either. it is hard work y'all have seen that in our other videos it can be very inconvenient at times no doubt that's not good there goes something else in the lake okay good talk yeah hopefully you guys learned something if you did please give this video a thumbs up subscribe to our channel we post lifestyle vlogs and informational videos about living on the water thanks so much for watching good talk <laughs> thanks for watching